with a shareholder, Fifth Third Asset Management Portfolio Manager Peter Kwiatkowski. Uh, Pete's fund helps oversee about 725,000 shares of Disney. And Peter, uh, thank you for joining us. And, you know, the question is raised, right? I mean, if Steve Jobs has missed, what, more than 25 percent of the meetings, the board meetings at Disney, does he deserve to stay on the board? Um, uh, we believe that he should stay on the board. He is the largest shareholder. Obviously, the big issue there is probably health. Um, he adds a lot to the board by his uh, you know, technology background. He's a visionary. So we think he should stay on the board. Uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, asking the question, though, as ISS is recommending, and uh, see what Disney says about that, although um, we don't have any special insights into his health, and I'm not sure they're going to be able to give any if Apple hasn't given any. So, um, But nothing wrong with asking the question, but certainly. But if, he, if he's missing so many board meetings, what exactly is he adding in shareholder value then? Um, you know, I, I think the, the big thing is is that that was probably health-related. If it improves, um, he is somebody that you want. Um, he's, he would be an independent one, um, along with the Facebook COO who, who we just put on the Disney board. Disney's mm -hmm. done a great job of getting a lot of independent directors on there. So I think that that's kind of the bottom line there. Obviously, you continue to ask the question, um, is he not going to be able to attend future um, board meetings and so on, and then, you know, what uh, value is he adding? But right. um, the potential for him to add just a great amount of value, uh, given the, you know, just his experience and his uh, visionary leadership, I think, uh, you know, aug augurs for him to stay on the board along with his, uh, he is the largest shareholder, so he has that right as well. Right. Uh, but, you know, something interesting that's kind of a side point to all of this is that Steve Jobs and Bob Iger are very close friends, or at least they've become very close friends. Uh, you know, every time there's a new Apple product out. Bob Iger is out there saying how much he loves the iPad, he loves the iPod, what content he wants to drive uh, to those products. Some question if that relationship is getting too cozy, if at some point Disney might compromise uh, some of their revenue, some of their profit because of this relationship with Apple and Jobs. Um, you know, I think um, there, there's a couple ways to look at that. I think, you know, maybe outside of the board meetings, Steve Jobs is adding value. Maybe he's not actually at the board meetings, but he is providing his expertise. So that's something to think about. The other thing is, is that Disney has been kind of on the cutting edge um, of, you know, digital media, um, baby, basically selling a... Um, a digital copy of the movie along with the DVD, and that's something that, that Steve Jobs is probably involved with. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we think he's continuing to add value there. It's, you know, but it's definitely worth asking the question. It is, it is a tough question at this point because there's, I think there's a health issue there. Um, but I do think that Steve Jobs, if he is healthy, um, it would be great if he could attend some of these meetings um, formally and uh, kind of put those questions to bed. I, I agree. It, it, it adds uncertainty, and investors don't like uncertainty. Well, well Peter, on, on the flip side then, if Steve Jobs were not on the Disney board, would it make any difference to you? Um, uh, to us, it would. Obviously, we want a healthy Steve Jobs on the board. Um, but again, we think he adds a tremendous amount of value. Um, again, along we, um, this, the Facebook CEO also joined on. We think that technology angle is very important um, for Disney.